Segan Therapeutics is a publicly traded company focused on the significant unmet need of global health, and that is the treatment of life-threatening inflammatory conditions that are precipitated by cytokine storm syndrome. And so with me to explain more about the company, cytokine storm, what your devices do, is the CEO of the company, and that is Jim Joyce. So great to have you here. Jane, nice to be on the show. So let's do um, just kind of a, an overall look at what you're working on the company, and then particularly what are some of your main devices that are in development and are being used right now. Yeah, our lead product, Jane, is called Segan Therapy. Uh, and as you referenced, it's designed to address cytokine storm syndrome, which precipitates a wide range of life-threatening inflammatory conditions, uh, including sepsis, which is the number one cause of in-hospital deaths, and during our COVID-19 outbreak, it's been the primary cause of death and severe infections. Uh, so it's, a, as you mentioned, a significant unmet need in global health. And there's a common theme amongst all of our targets that we, that we target to treat with Segan therapy. And that is that they're not addressed with approved drug therapies. Okay. And this is an enormous market because you just mentioned sepsis and, and COVID. I mean, these are huge challenges in the healthcare industry. So this is, could be potentially be a very large market. Uh, it, it's a very significant market because it provides pathways into the sepsis market, which that's a $20 billion unmet need as it is. But what people recognize, they, they recognize because of the media, the role that cytokine storm plays uh, in COVID-19 deaths. But Underlying all this is the emerging pandemic of drug re resistant bacterial threats, uh, which are now killing about 700,000 people each year uh, and are projected to, to reach up to 10 million deaths a year by 2050 if there's not an advancement of a new technology to address this. And the challenge historically for drugs has been that there's no one single target. There's a very broad spectrum of targets. Uh, and this opens up the door uh, for broad spectrum medical device mechanisms of action uh, that can, you know, not just address a broad spectrum of the targets that are pro-inflammatory, but in some cases be designed to also simultaneously address the sources of the inflammation as well. Interesting. And your product is a device. Because when I was doing a little reading, I was like, is this a drug? And it's actually a device. So how yes, does that work? How does it work? Yeah. So it's a, it's a medical device. Uh, and it looks very much like a dialysis cartridge, if you think about what an artificial kidney looks like. And we designed it so that it's blood in, blood out. This means it's kind of a plug and play device that works on the global infrastructure of dialysis and CRRT machines already located in hospitals and clinics worldwide. But when blood flows through the device, blood plasma is separated away from blood cells. And then within our device, we incorporate a cocktail of absorbent components that address a wide spectrum of inflammatory factors, pro-inflammatory cytokines, as well as sources of inflammation, such as endotoxin and bacterial infections. And this is done in a hospital? It is. Okay, would it be done in a clinic at all or just hospital strictly? Uh, it's possible it can be done in a clinic, uh, but typically in every ICU, uh, there are dialysis and CRRT machines right there to be, you know, where this can be deployed. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way I understand it is it absorbs some of the inflammatory cytokines, right? So it reduces some of those things that are putting the body, body out of balance. That's correct. And, and, and you used a very good term, out of balance, because that's exactly what's happening. You have excess production of pro-inflammatory cytokines, uh, which we quickly can modulate those down to rebalance the immune system. And, and the elegant thing about our design is that it's able to do this in a single cartridge, yet doesn't cause any interaction with blood cells. The, blood, the targets are separated away from blood cells, so there's no means for our mechanism to continue to activate blood cells that might continue the inflammatory process. So you mentioned the FDA. So this device is um, where in the FDA approval process? We're targeting to submit an investigational device exemption uh, towards the end of summer this year to initiate human studies. Um, our process with FDA is one where we're a PMA product. Uh, we go through CDRH. This is the medical device division of FDA. 
the reviewers there are the same reviewers uh, that we've worked with previously on our other devices. In fact, the review team there uh, participated uh, along with me and others in a five-year Department of Defense DARPA program to treat medical devices uh, or to treat sepsis and wounded warfighters with medical devices. So we, we have a good understanding of the process. Uh, and our first study will be a feasibility study uh, to demonstrate safety of our device, to demonstrate that it's well tolerated. And it's during that study that we'll also be able to report observations uh, on reductions of sources of inflammation, as well as inflammatory cytokine levels. Uh, and then we plan to bridge off of that feasibility study into pivotal studies of multiple indications. Okay, well, very interesting. And I think we've all learned over the past year important sciences. So um, we appreciate what you do and um, come back later in the year with an update once this gets through the FDA and um, we can get an update on where you are with the company. All right. Thank you, Jane. I appreciate it. All right. Take care.